Ah, the Nintendo 64, the console that made polygons bearable. It was the mid 90s and gaming was still a relatively niche hobby, but the N64 was about to change all that. It was a machine that promised to transport gamers to another dimension. And my God, dependent on who you ask, it delivered. The Nintendo 64 was a machine of many wonders. First and foremost, it was the first console to bring true 3D gaming to the masses. Or was that PlayStation? Suddenly, gamers could explore vast worlds, swing across vines and battle giant bosses in ways that had never been possible before. It was a time of innocence, a time of wonder, a time when a plumber could leap through a painting and a green dinosaur could race around a track. So let's raise a glass to the Nintendo 64 and to all the hours of joy it brought us. Cheers N64, you are one in a million. Kicking things off, number 20, Beetle Adventure Racing. You might think that driving a Beetle will be slow and boring, but this game shows that even the most unlikely of vehicles can be a thrilling race. Yes, instead of sleek supercars or high performance sports vehicles, you are driving around in a Volkswagen Beetle. But don't let that cute exterior fool you. These little bugs can move, and they need to, because the tracks in this game are some of the most insane and creative you'll ever see. Adventure! Number 19, World Driver. There's something undeniably charming about World Driver. Maybe it's the cheesy techno soundtrack or the pixelated cars bouncing off one another like pinballs. Maybe it's the way the AI drivers completely bounce around with total little disregard for human life. I'm serious, these guys swerve wildly across the track with reckless intention. In a world of hyper-realistic racing sims and virtual reality headsets, it's easy to forget the humble origins of this genre. World Driver has heart. Number 18, WWF No Mercy. Or should I say WWE? Or should I take it one step further and tell the World Wildlife Fund to F off? You know, I can't help but love WWE No Mercy. It's a game that captures a certain moment in time, a time when wrestling was at the peak of its popularity, and a time when the N64 was still a viable gaming platform. It's a game that I'll always hold dear, warts and all. Number 17, F-Zero X. Yes, the game that tested your reflexes, your timing, and your ability to withstand nausea. But let's not forget about the characters F-Zero X had a cast of bizarre racers, each with their own strengths and weaknesses. There was Captain Falcon, the poster boy of the series, who was basically a space cowboy. F-Zero X on the N64 is a game that was fast, fun and challenging. It was a game that pushed the limits of what was possible on the N64 and it remains a classic to this day. Number 16, 1080 Snowboarding. 1080 snowboarding may have been impressive back in the day, but by today's standards, it looks as about as sharp as a block of cheese left out in the sun. The characters are blocky, the textures are blurry, and the snow looks like it was made from mashed potatoes. But you know what? It doesn't matter, because the gameplay is where this shines. And that, my friends, is what makes it a classic. 1080. Number 15, Excitebyte 64. This is a game that never gets the credit, the kudos it deserves. Everybody waxes lyrical about Banjo-Kazooie and conquers Bad Fur Day, but I say bollocks, this is where it's at. And those of you subscribed to this channel will already know that. If you disagree, there's always Nintendo Life. For me, Excitebyte 64 took everything that was good about the original, captured the excitement of the real thing, and ramp the gameplay up to maximum. Today, it's both silly and satisfying, and it will make you feel like a kid again. Number 14, GoldenEye. Who will be the next James Bond? That's a good question. I think Idris Elba would make a good James Bond. And then there's Henry Cavill. But let's face it, they're no Sean Connery. In fact, after Sean Connery, my favorite James Bond protagonist would be Timothy Dalton. In fact, although Pierce Brosnan was a good James Bond, he was never a favourite of mine. 
But GoldenEye the movie, as with the game, it's as if the stars aligned and it all came together. For King and Country, James. For King and Country. Number 13, Star Fox. I remember this one being a real feast for the eyes. The controls were tight and responsive, and each level had its own unique challenges and objectives, from dogfighting in space to dodging obstacles in a narrow canyon. And let's not forget the boss battles, they were epic. This is a game that was firing on all cylinders. It has memorable characters and an engaging storyline. It's a true classic on the N64, and no wonder it's still remembered fondly by gamers today. Number 12, Perfect Dark. So how do you beat a game like GoldenEye? Well apparently it's really simple, just add more of everything and then some. First off, let's talk about developer Rare. These guys weren't just masters on the N64, they were masters on anything they touched. That's right, I'm looking at you, the Sinclair ZX Spectrum. Alright, alright, I know, tell you something you don't already know. I'm just saying these guys knew their stuff and get this. Perfect Dark, this game had it all. Number 11, Donkey Kong 64. Now I was a massive fan of the original Donkey Kong, and I was also an even bigger fan of the Donkey Kong series on the Super Nintendo. So to grow up with this guy, and then see him transition into 3D, it was less of a thing of beauty, but more of a next step. Donkey Kong 64, it's an incredibly well designed game. Uh, the levels were varied and challenging with a wide range of obstacles and enemies to overcome. Number 10, Mario Kart 64. When you think of party games, you'd be right to think of Mario Party, but Mario Kart 64 was also a fantastic party game. Up to four players could play at once. And the competitive nature of the game also made for some great moments of trash talking and friendly rivalry. The same is still true today on the Nintendo Switch. So if you'll excuse me, I'm off to fire up my N64 and release some of those fond memories for myself. Number 9, Yoshi's Story. Now this is still one I play today with my children especially with the release of it on the Nintendo Switch. And I still think the graphics are really good, but I suppose you've got to be real here. The graphics are nowhere near as impressive as they were back then when you saw them. Sure, they're still cute, but compared to modern day games, uh, they do look a little simplistic. But maybe that's part of its charm and why I still like it and why my children think it's really good to play. I'll tell you what though, it's not as easy as it looks. Number 8, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2. This is every bit as good as what you play on the PlayStation. If there is to be a gripe, let's face it, it doesn't sound as good. I suspect that's because Nintendo doubled down on the N64 cartridge technology, when we all know and agree, admittedly in hindsight, that it really should have released with CD. I think it looks better than on the PlayStation 1, so for that reason alone, I'm recommending it, and it's all street skating these days. Give me skate parks any day of the week. Number seven, Star Wars Shadow of the Empire. Now this was a tricky one because I also love Rogue Squadron, but when I thought long and hard about it, one, this looks better, and two, this is the one I go back to, I revisit the most. So in my mind, that has to stand for something. But what a game. I mean, sure, the graphics were blocky and the controls were a bit wonky, but essentially what they've done is taken the Star Wars universe and crammed it into a small grey box. That's the N64 to you and I. How did I get so lucky? Number six, Glover. Now, I can't imagine this would make anybody's top 10, let alone top 20. But for me, it's easily... I mean, just look at it. It looks as good as Mario 64. And I could be wrong here, but you know when you just play one of those games and it gels, everything just clicks into place, it makes sense and you just can't put it down? Well that's Glover for me. It's not always obvious what you've got to do next. And I'm not even sure if this is unique gameplay, but it's something I never experienced before. 
So if you've got time, try Glover on for size. Number five, Spider-Man. This is a strange one. The graphics are blocky and the textures are a bit blurry and you feel like you're looking at the world through a pair of dirty glasses. Then there's the camera. It's like trying to navigate a maze blindfolded while someone is throwing rocks at your head. The controls aren't the best either, with Spider-Man unable to decide whether he wants to swing, crawl or climb. But you know what, despite all the flaws, there's something strangely charming about Spider-Man on the Nintendo 64. Maybe it's just one of those where it's so bad, it's good. Number 4. Paper Mario. Now my 7 year old demanded that I include this. It got so heated that she demanded I move out. So begrudgingly, it's in the list. It's a good game, I'm not going to lie. I've played it on many occasions. It's a fantastic challenge, it's a brilliant story. It's fun for all the family, and I guess the true test is if kids today still like it. And my seven and five year old can't get enough, although the latter just mashes the buttons. But this one still holds up, and in 2023, this is still fun for all the family. Number three, The Legend of Zelda, Majora's Mask. Now on a different day, this could easily be my number one. I can't even begin to tell you how obsessed I became with this game. One hour turned to two, four hours turned to eight, and decades later, I'm still playing it, albeit I have to own up on the Nintendo Switch. I believe this is one of many of Nintendo's finest hour. And if that doesn't make sense, let's just go with it's bloody good. Number two, The Legend of Zelda, Ocarina of Time. I had someone say to me the other day that they didn't like this game because they found it really frustrating, the puzzles. But for me, that's always been the point. The pull of the game, the programmers know that you're probably not as clever as them, so they're just gaslighting you. But for me, it remains a beloved classic and it's a testament to really good storytelling. So in The Legend of Zelda, Ocarina of Time, you'll find a game that's well worth your time. Yeah! <laughs> 
We've saved the best till last. Number one, Super Mario Bros. 64. Some people might not want to hear this, but Super Mario 64 is a classic game that paved the way for 3D platformers. Yes, it's a bit rough around the edges compared to games of today, but it's still worth revisiting for its nostalgia and its place in gaming history. And if you are feeling frustrated, just take a deep breath and remember, it's not the game's fault, it's you. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe, like and comment. Until next time, bye!